Joint pain, tendonitis, and overuse injuries plague so many people. I've been watching a lot of videos about the next class of 2024 Appalachian Trail through hikers, and people are already having to take rest days because of joint pain, like their knees and their hips, and they're having Achilles tendonitis. So what I want to share with you in this video is what I've been doing for the past 23 years as an Ironman triathlete, a backpacker, a rock climber, a ballroom dancer, what I've been doing to be injury free the entire time. Now this doesn't mean I haven't had aches and pains here and there, but I've never missed a season or even a registered event due to injury. I've been coaching athletes for more than 10 years and I've helped dozens and dozens of people be injury free or prevent injury, overcome injury in that time. Now I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physical therapist, I'm not a healthcare professional of any kind, but this is what I've been doing. And I know that a lot of you have been watching videos and trying all the different stretching and strength training programs and still having pain, still having chronic injury. Now it's interesting that people still turn to stretching as one of their main preventative measures. But you know, if stretching works so well, then why do so many gymnasts and dancers suffer from some of the highest rates of chronic injury? Actually, there have been hundreds of studies trying to show that stretching prevents or helps you overcome injury, and I haven't heard of a single study that actually proves that in hundreds of studies. A lot of people also turn to strength training, which I'm a fan of that as well, and I'm also a fan of stretching, but some of the strongest people, the professional athletes, the weightlifters, bodybuilders, gymnasts, dancers, these are some of the strongest people out there and they also are plagued by chronic injury. We also hear about things like if you do get an injury, use RICE, which stands for Rest, Ice, Compression, Elevation. But did you know that the surgeon who came up with that protocol, Dr. Gabe Merkin, as a marathon runner and an orthopedic surgeon back in the 1970s, but in 2015, he completely redacted that protocol. Rice is no longer the standard of care for some kind of joint pain, tendonitis, ligament injury, sprain, anything like that. So what are we supposed to do? I want to help you be injury free like I've helped myself and like I've helped so many friends, family, and athletes that I've coached over the years. What do I think is really going on when it comes to joint pain or tendonitis or this overuse injury? A lot of people think that it's all the pounding that we do on our joints. So let's talk about that for a moment. Again, as a biomedical engineer who's designed dozens of hip implants and spinal implants over the years, let's talk about pounding of joints. Joints do not pound like a hammer pounds a nail, right? So a hammer pounds a nail like this. So let's talk about the knee joint as an example. You've got the femoral condyles and the tibial plate. There's no gap between the femur and the tibia. It's not pounding like a hammer pounds a nail. The bones are always in contact. Sure, they're, they've got synovial fluid and they just articulate. This is the femur articulating on the tibia. It's not pounding like this. It might get loaded like this, but it's not pounding, okay? So it's important to, to think about your joints that way. They're there to articulate, which is move, not pounding, wearing out your joint. And we hear about overuse injury all the time, like, oh, we're using our body too much. Our body is made to move. We have evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to move all the time walking, running, jumping, hopping. We are meant to move slow and move fast. This is what we're supposed to do. So this overuse just doesn't make any sense to me. And some of the latest research we're hearing about is the fascia. And the fascia is just the connective tissue that sort of encapsulates everything in, in your muscles and, and between your organs and all. I really don't believe that it's the fascia that's causing all this joint pain. What I think is actually going on, it's all happening in the muscle. And the problem is we have knotted up muscle fibers. 
A knotted muscle or part of your muscle that's knotted is muscle fibers that are stuck in a contracted state. They're, they're flexed, okay? Just a part of the muscle, and it could be deep in the muscle, but it's stuck in a flexed state, so it can't elongate like it needs to. Now, we try stretching to elongate it, but it doesn't hold. That flexibility doesn't maintain, so it's short again, and it can't get long like it needs to because there's a knot. Well, when you've got a knot in your muscle, and that muscle can't elongate, what it does is it pulls on the next piece of anatomy, and that's the tendon, because tendons attach muscle to bone. That's how our anatomy works. So when we are using our bodies, we're using that muscle, and it can't elongate like it needs to, it pulls on the tendon. Tendons don't like that. Muscles can stretch and stretch and stretch like a rubber band. Eventually, they'll, they'll rupture, but they have to go a really long way before they rupture. But tendons have a limited range of motion. They want to go from here to here, and that's it. Okay, but we keep using it. We keep pulling. So the tendon doesn't like that. So it inflames. That's tendinitis, tendon inflammation. Okay, so now we keep using our bodies. We keep going because, you know, no pain, no gain. I've got to keep working. We keep pulling on that muscle. We keep pulling on that tendon. And then the tendon, what happens next? It starts to pull out of the insertion site in the bone. So tendons typically insert into bone, that's where they get anchored, right around the joint. So if you're having knee pain, it's very likely that the tendon is trying to pull out of where it inserts around the knee. So there's a lot of different tendons because there's a lot of different muscles. So depending on where your knee hurts, that's the tendon and then that's the part of the muscle that is most likely knotted up. No amount of stretching is going to alleviate a knotted up muscle fiber. We do strengthening, which is which can help, and a lot of people that does help them. And let me just qualify everything here by saying that my number one rule as a coach is that if something's working for you, keep doing it. It doesn't matter what I say or what I believe or what I think. If something's working for you, then keep on doing that. And then once it's not working anymore, we can talk about it and let's see if what I'm talking about here today helps you. So why I think so many people, especially the doctors and physical therapists, believe that this is a strength problem, which blows my mind because we've got athletes, even professional and Olympic athletes that suffer from this chronic overuse and muscle weakness issue. Think about it this way. If you have a muscle that is partially stuck in a contracted state, so let's just say, for example, 20% of your muscle is contracted. So if you've got knee pain and it's in your quad muscle that has knots, then on your good side, you contract that quad muscle and you get a full 100% contraction out of it because it's like there's no knots in that muscle. But on the other side, where you do have some knots, where some of the muscle is partially stuck in a contracted state, when the doctor or physical therapist or healthcare person goes to test you, it presents as weakness. Because if let's say 20% of that muscle is knotted up, it's already contracted, when you go to fire that muscle, you're only getting an 80% contraction. So it looks like it's weak, but it's really not weak, it's just that you're not getting a full contraction out of that muscle. And again, you can strengthen all the muscles around it, you can strengthen the actual muscle, but you're still not getting a full contraction. So down the road, you can still have pain from the tendon, which got inflamed, and from the joint, which you're pulling the tendon out of. And then when you keep trying to work that joint and pull tendon tendons out of the bone, that joint is taking more stress, and now that can start to inflame. That's called arthritis, joint inflammation. So the point here is that we have knotted up muscle fibers and we need to release those knots. We need to release that stuck in the contracted state muscle. And what I found, the best way to do this is through manual manipulation. So massage, foam rolling are the things that you can do yourself. If you can afford to get a professional massage every day, great, go do that. But I personally do not know anybody that can afford to get a professional massage every single day. 
So you can do self massage with the foam rollers and the balls and things like that. You can also try dry needling, acupuncture, cupping. You know, these are other techniques, even Graston. That's a way to really work out the muscle and it hurts like hell, but it can also be super, super helpful. And I've tried these, these things, but what I can do every day or multiple times a day is I can foam roll. And when you're out hiking the Appalachian Trail for three, four, five, six months, you can't get off the trail and get a massage. And oh my gosh, getting cortisone injections, that's like, I mean, if it helps you, great, but that just sounds like the most awful thing. And there's a lot of research that shows that it actually can cause a lot more damage down the line. So we want to massage our muscles. And what kind of tools do we use to massage or self-massage? And that's where we're gonna have a roll evolution, right? This is where foam rollers are so important. So here is one of the most common foam rollers. This is about $10 at Walmart. It's super light, but way too bulky to carry with you in your backpack. So what I highly recommend is a Nalgene bottle. So this is a one liter, 32 ounce, wide mouth Nalgene bottle. And it's super hard, so you're not gonna crush it under your body weight. And I added some grip tape that you would put on stairs, and this makes it really grippy, so if you're rolling on the shelter floor, it won't slide out from under you, okay? So it really helps. I've tried it out, it's fantastic. And I know this bottle weighs a lot more than a smart water bottle, but I'd highly recommend you change out one of your smart water bottles for a Nalgene bottle. And I really believe this will help you be injury free for your whole Appalachian Trail through hike. Okay, I can't promise anything, but I know it's going to really help you a lot. The other tool that I really, really like a lot is the lacrosse ball. I wouldn't use a tennis ball because they tend to be slippery. And also, honestly, I can crush a tennis ball with the weight that I put on it, but I cannot crush a lacrosse ball. But this is really kind of heavy to carry when you're backpacking. So what I highly recommend, and a lot of people carry them already, is a cork ball. It's about the same size. This is actually just a wine cork ball um, for a, a decanter, and it's way lighter, and it can hold your body weight pretty darn well. And that's what I recommend carrying when you're going backpacking. So these are the main tools that I would recommend. Now I know a lot of people carry the cork ball and they roll out, they, they roll out their muscles like this, you know, maybe their feet. And, and honestly, I think you could do so much better with how you roll. And I'm going to share with you how to roll, not in this video, but in upcoming videos, but I'll explain it to you in this video. And so when you're rolling out your muscles, I really would discourage rolling out your tendons because tendons don't tend to be so flexible. Again, if it feels good and it's helping you, great, go do that. But I think the real problem is in your muscle. It's just showing up with pain in your tendon, with tendon inflammation, that's tendonitis, or the pain is really coming from the tendon pulling out of the bone right around the joint. So the protocol that I highly recommend, and this is like the big news, to roll twice a day and it's more important to roll frequently with lower intensity than to roll like once a week and get really high intense i mean you can actually bruise your muscles and your skin when you roll really hard you can make yourself sore just like you can get sore after getting a professional massage so more frequent rolling so i would say morning and evening like before bed and as soon after you wake up to do your rolling and one of the most important things, and I see this wrong in, in so many videos and, and ads and so on, is that so many people are rolling their muscles out when the muscle is in a flexed state. When your muscle is flexed, okay, this is a little embarrassing, but when your muscle is flexed, you can't dig in deep. And how many people are flexing when they're getting a professional massage? No, you relax completely. And that's the key to rolling is Let's say you're rolling your calf, okay? So this is my foot, this is my calf. You don't want your toe pointed straight up because that's gonna be flexing the calf muscle. You want your toe to be relaxed, then you can dig into that calf muscle a lot more. You're gonna get a much more effective roll. And something else that people experience a lot when they're rolling is it's so tender, it hurts just to roll. 
if it hurts your muscle when you're rolling, then that's all the more reason why you need to be rolling your muscles and massaging your muscles even more because your muscles should not be tender when you're putting pressure on them. It shouldn't, it shouldn't hurt. It should hurt so good, actually. So that's the key. So what I'd recommend is if you can warm up your muscles first, like before you even get out of bed in the morning, you can't do this on the trail, but before you get out of bed in the morning, you can wrap your calves or your quads in a heating pad, or you can roll after taking a shower, hot shower or bath or after the hot tub. Those are great times to roll because your muscles are already really warmed up and you can get in a lot deeper. So first, warm up the muscle, then do your rolling. It could be, you know, a minute. It could be 30 seconds. I'd recommend anywhere from two to 10 minutes per muscle, right? So two to 10 minutes on your right quad, two to 10 minutes on your left quad, really whatever feels good. And again, it should hurt so good that you kind of want to keep doing it. So warm up the muscle, then roll the muscle, then do some very light stretching. I mean, super light stretching, and then just shake it out a little bit. And I think that's the protocol that's going to really help you be injury free. And I think it's going to help you overcome some of these injuries, especially if you just started to get some pain, some Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, knee pain, hip pain, tennis elbow, carpal tunnel, shoulder pain. These are all areas where you can roll the muscle to improve and ease the joint pain and the tendonitis that's happening around that joint. And again, this is what I've been doing for 23 years to be injury free. And let me tell you, I don't do any strength training and I do barely, hardly any stretching. Now, those two activities are great for other reasons, but not for preventing injury or overcoming your injury. So and in terms of overuse, um, one last thing that I forgot to mention about the 10% rule, I think the 10% rule is just an approach for people who don't really understand what the true issue is. I'm not a fan of going too much too fast anyway because your body does need time to adapt. But I once trained an athlete from couch to Ironman in six months injury free. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that, but it is possible. I really think the 10% rule is just a safety factor when you don't actually understand the problem. But if you roll and massage out your muscles, on a regular basis, I think then you're going to have much greater success and your performance is also going to improve a lot. So if this made sense to you, if it sounds like something you want to work on and do, please give it a thumbs up and like it and subscribe to my channel, please, because I'm going to be doing a series of how to roll out your muscles to help improve your joint pain and tendonitis all throughout the body. So subscribe so you'll get notified for all of those videos. They'll be shorter than this one, but how to actually do the foam rolling. And then comment on how things are going. I've had people get relief after rolling for the very first time. Not saying it's gonna cure all your problems, but for any of these chronic overuse injuries, I think this is what's gonna help you tremendously. So like, comment, and share. Stay tuned and feel better. And until next time, peace, love, and connect.